Hi guys, Anton from Flytrap Factory here again today with another of our showcase episodes. Today I'd like to um, deviate slightly and show a quick glimpse of a commission I've been working on for the past couple of months for Mike Bravo Miniatures, a new 28mm modern miniature manufacturer hailing from Bath in the United Kingdom. Now the owner of Mike Bravo Miniatures, Dan Miedenbauer, approached me after I answered a, uh, a commission request on the miniatures page. And after a brief discussion, I was asked to submit uh, some trial figures, a couple of trial figures, at which point once he saw the photographs and received the figures, I was then recruited by Dan to complete a number of modern space miniature lines for Mike Bravo miniatures. Now, the first wave of releases uh, I've done for Mike Bravo uh, includes this 10-man uh, 1980s era United States Army Infantry Squad. The miniatures in this range have been sculpted entirely in uh, nidotite, an unmodified blend of green stuff. The original weapons were sculpted in brown Aves epoxy sculpt, at which point a mould was made of them, and they were cast in white metal. By doing this, by following this process, it ensures that there's uniformity throughout the weapons range, which is quite essential when uh, when working on a historically accurate or realistic uh, subject matter. Now, the majority of the weapons, uh, especially as was evident in the M47 Dragon, the anti-tank weapon, all originals of the, of the weapons are sculpted slightly larger than scale. Uh, this is deliberate to ensure that once the master mould has been taken into consideration and the various production moulds, the shrinkage that can be experienced in casting white metal is catered for. So when you take the, uh, the M47 Dragon and you drag that down through a couple of generations of moulding and casting, the final result is not going to be a, a spindly smaller than it should be example on the, uh, the customer's purchased figures. Now all the equipment, all the figures in this range have been sculpted with the following uh, tools. The starters, my tried and true, for the fine detail, the tool that I've showcased in the last couple of epi episodes, uh, with the sewing needle and the battered steel paddle. Uh, this tool is getting more and more use uh, as I sculpt forward. Uh, my shaved down jeweler's screwdriver with the blunt tip. Uh, in addition to that, I have my dedicated paddle which is an old Games Workshop sculpting paddle which has just been broken off and modified. My primary clay shaper for equipment folds and uniform folds. And a bird down scalpel for straight edge sculpting. Uh, especially handy when it came to mastering the, the weapons, the assault rifles and the machine guns. So there you have it. That's the core set of tools that I use in the production design creation of this commission. Now, the soldiers in this range have all been all sculpted wearing standard BDU or battle dress uniform, concurrent with 1980s era uh, United States Army infantrymen. The soldiers have been sculpted with the all-purpose lightweight individual carrying equipment or Alice suspender rig adopted by the United States Army in 1973. Now, what you won't see on these figures is the LBV, or the load-bearing vest, which is notable uh, on for troops in the sort of later 1980s period. Uh, now, should Dan wish me to add the LBVs to these uh, infantry figures, it's not a problem, it's just a matter of some slight modifications, a bit of conversion work and some additional sculpting, and this whole 10-man unit can be uh, equipped with the LBV with very little fuss. We'll look at that later on. Now, in addition to the Alice rig, the, uh, the following items are also present on these models. For starters, uh, on the belt lines, you have the array of uh, Alice magazine pouches. Now, each of these magazine pouches holds three M16 magazines, uh, and in addition to that, two M67 grenades. 
Now, the side the pouches, you have the soldiers equipped with the compass pouch, uh, and if it's appropriate for the soldier to be carrying a pistol, a holster is also evident. Now, the soldiers are also, also equipped with first aid pouches, and the butt pack, which contained all the field necessities for up to a three-day operation for each soldier. Quite a, a ubiquitous pack seen throughout Vietnam and into the 80s and early 90s. Now soldiers are equipped with the PAS GT helmet, the PAS GT helmet, nicknamed the K-Pot for its resemblance to German World War II helmets. Uh, it was a standard issue helmet at the time, which a BDU helmet cover uh, was also standard issue. Now the color, or the sorry, the camouflage patterns on the BDU and the helmet cover were entirely dependent on the deployment environment. Now on their feet, the soldiers are equipped with standard jungle boots of the time. Uh, quite common throughout the 1980s and 1990s, the jungle boots were designed for, yep, you guessed it, jungle environments. Surprise, surprise. Uh, however, these boots saw considerable use throughout Grenada, Panama, Iraq, Bosnia and Kosovo. Now as far as firearms, these troops are armed with an assortment of uh, M16A2 assault rifles. Now the M16A2 was a standard issue rifle for the US military at the time and the A1 version was also used up until Operation Just Cause in Panama in 1989. Now, M203 grenade launchers were also issued to the Grenadier and the squad. The M249 Mini-Me, or SAW, squad automatic weapon, was introduced in 1984 to bolster the squad's automatic firepower. There are two variants in this, uh, the small range. And in addition to the M249, we have the M60 uh, machine gun, of which the E3 version of this light machine gun saw wide use in the US military throughout the 1980s and 1990s. We also have a Dragon Operator, light armor weapon. This particular weapon is attached to the soldier's back, uh, can be removed for casting and will be supplied separately. There may be a plan to have a sculpt design with the infantrymen actually using the, uh, the Dragon, the uh, anti-tank weapon, but uh, that will be Dan's call at a later date. So there you have it guys, enough figures there for a, uh, a 1980s era United States Army Infantry Squad. Uh, these will be making their way across to the United Kingdom uh, in the coming days, where Dan eagerly expects them. I imagine they're going to be vulcanized and reproduced in white metal. Uh, for details on how to purchase these figures when they come to hand, uh, for more information on Mike Bravo Miniatures, uh, please feel free to drop me a PM. I'll point you in the right direction, introduce you to Dan, and, uh, and he can sort of take the show from there. Now, I know Dan has plans to expand upon this line uh, in the future, and that's in addition to delving into other theatres. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if you see a designated marksman, sniper, mortar crews or other battlefield assets turn up in, the, in due course. Now guys, I hope you like what you've seen today. Uh, if you do, please show your support by uh, liking this channel, sharing the information and subscribing. We have a lot more in the pipeline, a lot more to share with you over the coming months. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your time today and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.